How's it going folks? Kent Howard here, Green Mountain Defense. Coming to you today to do a little bit different of a video. Today we're going to talk about magazines. Specifically we're going to talk about the Magpul P-Mags for the Glock 9mm. These happen to be the 17 round Glock 17 mags and uh, I'm going to try them out today in our Glock 19 4th gen. Now Magpul released these at the, uh, I believe it was the 2015 SHOT Show. And at that time, they had a uh, little bit of an issue with the mag body and geometry. The 17 mags weren't working so hot in the uh, 19 and the 26. So what did Magpul do? Um, they recalled all of them. They put out a huge uh, press release email. They used the term, we screwed up in their press release. They made a big thing out of it. They replaced everybody's mags. Then they re-released them. And uh, there's a date code here on the mag body that basically tells you that if it was made after May of 2015, your mag should be good to go. Uh, these mags were, both these two mags, these two 17 rounders, were made in uh, August of 2015. So, why a Magpul P-Mag versus a standard Glock 19 or Glock 26 mag? Uh, well, for starters, they're cheaper. Uh, you can get these bad boys for uh, MSRP is about $15 on these, where a Glock mag's MSRP at 25, um, quite often you'll even see them higher price than that um, and you know in today's economy 10 bucks is 10 bucks that'll get you a couple extra mags Magpul has been well known obviously for AR-15 AK-47 accessories they've done a really good job with uh, their P mag line and their mag links and their actual mag pools that they're known for all that kind of thing so there's no reason these mags shouldn't be you know as reliable and let's be real clear about what my standards are for reliability. This Glock 19 4th Gen, I have never, knock wood, never had a malfunction with this firearm. Um, I've had about a year and a half. I lost count somewhere around the, uh, I don't know, 3,000, 3,500 round range, somewhere in there. I lost count, stopped keeping track. So, never had a malfunction in that gun. I don't expect one with these mags, and if I do have one, they're just not reliable. So, that being said, let's discuss the differences in the mags. Number one, you have this high-vis orange follower. Um, that's a little bit different. It is a no-tilt follower. Um, so we'll see how that holds up. Uh, guys in other videos have commented on how much easier the base plate is to remove these. Simply just by pushing a punch in there and sliding the base plate off for cleaning. Um, that's good news because having to compress your mag bodies to remove these base plates, that's just a pain right in the butt. They have the standard, uh, I don't know what you call it, Magpul Braille feature here that you can get a, you know, a chalk and number your mags, so that's kind of a nice feature. One thing they don't have is they don't have the Glock witness holes for every round. Um, so you can see here that's just a flat piece of polymer back there. There's one witness hole down here at the 17th round just to tell us that the mag is full. They do have the cutouts for the Ambi mag release for the Gen 4, which is a huge plus for me, because as you can see, my Gen 4 19 has the mag release switched over because I am, in fact, a left-handed shooter. These mags, I was messing with them at home earlier. Um, they do drop free just fine, empty. There's no reason for me to believe they won't drop free loaded, and they do seat very nicely as well. Never put any ammo in them, so let's see how they load up. Uh, we're shooting Winchester white box today with these. Um, you know, quite directly, if something's going to malfunction, it's going to be Winchester white box, uh, for me anyway, in these 4th gen guns, so we'll see how that goes. So we'll just load these up. A little stiff at first, um, you know, it's a brand new mag, so obviously might take a little bit of a break in, not nearly as easy to load as my, uh, you know, my, my weathered and worn 9 mil block mags, and some of these are from my, even from earlier guns, so some of these, you know, these two particular 9 mil block mags could be older than this, you know, year and a half old Gen 4. 
should be getting pretty close to our 17th round. I think that just was it. Just saw the follower through the witness hole. And there you go, 17 rounds. So, we're going to uh, go try it out, set the camera up down range. We're going to see how they shoot. We'll come back, we'll give you our final thoughts on them. Stay tuned. All right. We uh, had a look at them, got them loaded up. Obviously, these mags do drop free loaded as well. Very easy for mag to drop free fully loaded. 17 rounds of 9 mil does have some weight to it. Now we're just going to put them through their paces and see if they function. So I'm just going to put a bunch of rounds down range. I'm going to do my normal reloads for my uh, weak side mag carrier here. I'm just going to treat them like any other Glock mags. We're going to hit the dirt. We're going to see how they act for us, alright? Let's see. Interesting. We have a malfunction. Must have a bad primer on this Winchester white box round. Uh, round totally cycled correctly. As you can see, the primer is punctured. I'm gonna leave that right there on the tripod and uh, come back to it later, see what's going on with that round. But the mag was cycling perfectly fine. Slide lock, drop free, nice and easy. Perfect. So far, they feel just like any other Glock mag would. Slide lock. Drop free. So far, the first... Uh, First two bags went really well. The gun cycled fine. Like I said, we totally did have a uh, we had a bad round of Winchester white box here. Let's just see if that'll detonate its second time through the pistol. And certainly it will. And again, we have uh, normal ejection and mag locks back to the rear or the slide. Excuse me, locks back to the rear.
right, so we're back here at the uh, workbench slash reloading bench. Got back in from the range. I just thought I would uh, get up close and personal with these mags, give you guys a little bit better view of them. So here in my hand is a uh, standard Glock factory mag, a uh, G19 mag. Notice the uh, metallic sleeve around the feed lips here. The base plate, as you're about to see, is way more difficult to take off. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to mess with taking the factory Glock base plates off because I just don't find it fun at all. And you see, obviously, you can clearly tell this is a loaded mag. I'm witness holes right here. Um, you know, obviously, there's a lot of other uh, factory knockoff Glock mags. There's the, you know, the Korean stuff, the KCI, all those kinds of things. I wouldn't mess with any of them. Um, I've gotten into some of their extended capacity magazines uh, for the 40 caliber, and I, you know, I don't just kind of hit or miss with those mags, but. These Magpul uh, Glock mags, you know, I just put 100 rounds through them at the range. They just went fine. You guys saw that on video. So now we're just going to real quickly disassemble this for you. So I'm going to use my handy dandy Glock punch. You see right there is this little detent that I have to press. I just, all I literally have to do is press in that detent, start to push the base plate off. Right there you see the base plates half on, half off. Just going to kind of slowly remove the base plate and now you see I've captured or caught my recoil spring or not my recoil spring my uh, mag spring there and now there you go now it's separate you got the mag body right here you got the spring with the uh, captured follower and a captured um, plastic piece there for the bottom end can't think what to call that the tab or whatever and that little hole lines up in the bottom of the base plate you can see on these base plates on the bottom, they have this, I mentioned it before, this, uh, you know, Magpul tactical braille or whatever the heck you want to call it there so that you can chalk up your mags and, you know, number them or letter them or whatever you want to do. But that's like about as easy as it could possibly be to take a mag apart as far as cleaning it and so forth. Get a good look at the follower there. You got the no-tilt follower. Um, you know, so far, I'm 100 rounds in with these things. And uh, I don't have any complaints. You did see that, but, uh, you know, they are a little bit more difficult to load. Um, I'm gonna say probably that over time, they're gonna uh, soften up, they're gonna be way easier to load, probably just that spring. Um, but it does, you know, it takes just a little more effort than I would like to, uh, to load these up, so. It kind of almost seemed to hitch a little bit on those polymer feed lips. I don't know if that'll loosen up over time or not. But, you know, just wanted to get together, do a quick video for you of the uh, the Glock GL9 PMAG 17 rounder. They certainly, uh, they certainly have impressed me. And, you know, you can pick these up for $15 a whack as opposed to your uh, $25 or more dollar a whack Glock factory mags. So, uh, if you like this video, you like other videos like it, please like, favorite, subscribe. Um, hit us up on Facebook at Green Mountain Defense. Go to www.greenmountaindefense.com and uh, check out our training information, our courses we offer, and so forth. And uh, please share this, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We look forward to doing more videos for you. Thanks a lot. Have a nice night.